if you were going to develop a future back vision and strategy, what you would do is you would kind of, let me give you a visual to think about it sort of like the top half of a, of a clock. You know, if this is, uh, you know, the very top is 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock on the right, and then 9, 10, 11 on the left. Um, what we don't want to do as we start thinking about the future is to say, okay, well, I, I'm convinced, Mark, we should look 10 years out. Um, and then all of a sudden uh, go 10 years out to 2018, you know, 2028, by basically saying, okay, we've got this business, let's just kind of work its way incrementally in our, he in our minds out to what it would look like in 2028. That's not what you want to do. You want to clear your mind for the moment about the way things work today and not say that, and we call it don't let structure get in the way of strategy. You don't want the paradigm, the orthodoxies, and the nature of how business works to get in the way. This is present forward thinking. We're talking about a future back thinking. So do not let today's orthodoxy and way get in the way of visioning for the moment. It doesn't mean, you know, people get afraid and say, well, you're throwing out everything that we do today to vision. Well, you have to first imagine if you could clean sheet, just like zero-based budgeting things for the moment, and think about what is the environment really going to be like, and if I could develop the perfect enterprise in our minds, both of the core business and the future, what would it look like not being influenced by any constraints for the moment of today. That's why we might end up with an impressionist painting that's actually more towards two o'clock, um, you know, one o'clock, two o'clock, whatever. And, and that's kind of where we want to start. We want to think about, let's not, let's start with the environment and what it, what it could be um, like you know, when we talk about all these faint signals and trends and potential disruptions, what does 2028 start to look like? Um, this, was, this was huge in the automotive industry for a company in the United States we worked with, one of the big three, and we were walking, working with the top leadership team. It may surprise you to, just to show you how powerful this is, um, they went into this uh, effort of visioning and thinking about the future of automotive, th thinking, they didn't need to worry about electrification. This was in 2006, early 2016. They said people in the United States and around the world for that matter, don't really value electric vehicles enough to pay the premium and face some of the inconvenience of electrification. Um, we will be dictated what we have to do with electrification by regulatory requirements. So why don't we just make sure we keep up enough to just follow where we have to go anyway. You know, in other words, we'll just be reactive instead of proactive. When they went through this exercise and developed a point of view about the future as a collective team and wrestled with all the sort of information and faint signals, it completely changed their point of view and said, holy, holy cow, we are way behind. We need to invest now in our future in electrification um, because that's the way the world's going to go whether we like it or not, regardless of what information happens on global warming or on regulatory standards or what have you. Um, and everything changed in their point of view. And the interesting things about this sort of foresight, if you want to call it, that leads to an insight is once you have it, you never go back. So. They could never go back in their point of view, having spent time in the future and wrestling with the way things were working out. So that's point one, is to be able to think about that environment and the implications so that you can then do what is interesting, which is you don't have to accept the way things are going, you can shape it. So the second part of the impression is painting. What are the choices that we're gonna make not only about our core business, because again, remember, you want to believe your core has some relevance 10 years out, and you need to make commitments to continue to sustain it. But in addition, what kinds of things would you do beyond the core, such as potential new breakthrough initiatives that require a new business model? And then walk that back. If this is what 2028 looks like in terms of the choices we've made, what does 2026 need to look like 
in the kinds of choices to, that are going to make sure we get to 2028. Then what does 2024 look like in terms of business building capability efforts that then can get pretty close to a point of, OK, this is where we need to be a few years out. This is where we are today. What are the kinds of initiatives in small scale, ideally, for learning and risk management that we need to plant for the future of this intended impressionist painting in addition to the initiatives that we need to keep doing to sustain our core? That's the whole sort of essence of the way to do future back. And you do it through strategic dialogues because you need to be able to develop a shared point of view. And it's through the conversation of these teams that you develop this point of view about the vision and how to walk it back that then links it to innovation initiatives um, that actually drive tangibly how to get into that future.